In this episode, we're going to machine a dog tag out of this sheet aluminum, holding it with this tape. So I'm going to go ahead and make two tags at one time. This one's G54 and G55, so two different work coordinate systems, and that is because this one, they're getting different engravings. We're going to do an adaptive cut, and that's basically just going to face everything off to get everything to the thickness that we want. And these right here are within a thousandth of each other, so the, the thickness here, the, the height, the Z height, they're within a thousandth, so that's pretty good for this tape. So we're just going to let it rip and see what happens. restarted and that was because it went to do the engraving and it was just it was way too deep and I don't know what really happened there something with the cam I went in there and changed a few things thinking that might that might be the, the issue so went ahead and started again just faced everything off I also changed instead of a contouring around you know like cutting the part out I'm gonna change that for an adaptive so it's gonna cut everything around it and just leave the tag itself. So that should work a little bit better this time. never thought something so easy and so seemingly simple would be so hard. I'm just going to take a little bit of 400 grit sandpaper and just sort of go over it, get these, uh, get these little swirl marks out of there. So I ended up just using this paint marker here, put it all over the place and got it into the engravings and then sanded it down again with this 400 grit sandpaper and that sort of worked out pretty good. I still think the engraving was way too deep. It doesn't look terrible, but I just think it was way too deep. But 
it worked out and I'm happy with it. And I can put it on a dog. You like that, Lil? So on a real note, next time I do something like this, I would like to use some type of super glue or some type of just really strong adhesive as opposed to this stuff. I don't know. I just, it's gotten kind of annoying when I cut it and everything. Yeah, I don't know. I just want to use some adhesive next time just to try it out. So if I don't try it out next time, then somebody tell me I'm an idiot because I really want to try it just to see what happens. Also, I'd like to point out this cool thing. One of the guys watching my videos saw that I was still using the regular fog buster setup. This crazy thing with a magnet on it. Yeah, kind of annoying. So he had kind of designed something up to use this lock line from McMaster. And I printed, he sent me the file and I 3D printed these. And sort of painted them orange but it didn't turn out as good as I thought they would with the orange paint. But that's no matter. I didn't have to drill and tap any holes here. And everything worked out just like it should there's already holes in the side of this the headstock so no big deal there and it works out it just clamps over top of this lock line and your fog buster lines come right through and your fog buster clamps straight in there and it's just it's pretty rich i mean everything stayed right in place the whole time and it worked out really good so i'm gonna leave his email in the video description and if you want something like this maybe contact him see what he thinks and then go from there but yeah I'd like to personally thank him for for showing this to me it worked out really good for this project this is the first time I've used it for this project and it worked out really good it's really easy to use versus the regular stock fog buster setup once again thank you and thanks for watching